Did SDXL fail us? I think this is a very important question and since SDXL has been around for a while, it's a good time to ask it now. Now the reason why this is so important is because not only this tells us a lot about the future of image and video AI, but on top of that stability AI is the biggest provider of open source models for the community. So what they do and how they develop these models is very crucial for how we can use these models in the future. Let's have a quick recap of what actually was promised to us. Better artworks for challenging concepts and styles. And while that is a good thing, we also have very nice tools like ControlNet or image to image render for SD 1.5 that allow for very complex composition even with an older model. Another claim is that this is more intelligent with simpler language. And I think on that point, most people can agree because this is a model where you can actually use normal human language, just a normal sentence to describe the scene and you need a lot less words for styles for different keywords or even words inside of the negative prompt to get what you actually want out of the image. The next claim is fine tuning and advanced controls. And I think here a lot of people expected that they can train the models very easily and also all other methods can be applied with ease on the fly. I'm not sure if we have really seen this kind of thing. One more thing that is not announced in the text, but kind of announced in the image down here is that the SDXL model is better with text, but I think we still haven't seen really good results from text. So that is the promised land from the announcements. Let me know in the comments if you think we ever arrived at this sweet, sweet honey from their examples. Next, we're going to look at the statements from the community. Let's go. So here's the first statement from Justin Meyer, and he says, for me, it's that SDXL wasn't as much of a leap as I was hoping to see in a year for that space. When it released, it was basically just on par or slightly better than the community driven 1.5 models and those generated images many times faster and worked well on lower tier hardware. And that is an argument I hear from a lot of people out of the community, especially about the hardware requirement, because even though SDXL can do higher details and higher resolution, resolution, it requires a higher base resolution. And then on top of that often requires a high res fix. So you even need to do some upscaling. And all of that is too much for most people's hardware or makes the process very slow to use. And on top of that, the community models for SD 1.5 have already been very, very good. But the upscaling models that have been developed also by the community for SD 1.5 are tremendous in the quality that they can create and the details that they can put into these images. The next comment is from Baka Blitz 6591. He says it was simply a bit disappointing. DALI 3 came out, which is sort of what I was hoping for with SDXL, mainly on the creative side of things. DALI can truly make almost whatever you want, but with SDXL, it's the same old paragraph of keywords and phrases to get an image that only somewhat represents what you truly want. I guess to put it simply, SDXL doesn't feel XL. It feels like a slightly improved SD 1.5. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just what I feel when I use it. It's nothing new. Now, that is a very interesting comment that I think we can see reflected in a lot of the community, because even though SDXL promised to be applicable and open to a lot more artistic styles, it also isn't as flexible and kind of feels like a little bit better than SD 1.5, but not really that good. And the community models often feel much better, especially the Loras to create these artistic styles. But on top of that, if we see the evolution of the models, for example, for Mid Journey, but also for DALI 3, the artistic outputs and styles they create feel a lot more authentic. They feel a lot more like they really apply the materials that are used in these art forms and the artistic concepts behind that from the choices of the colors, the harmony, the composition, the artistic vision that you kind of expect in an artistic work, especially mid journey is really good by creating images that have this kind of warm artistic feel in it. Here are two more comments from my Twitter followers. One is from final form. He says, 
because I tried it, but it doesn't seem to be as good as what I'm getting out of 1.5. Dream Shaper XL is not as good as Dream Shaper 7, and I don't understand why. Also, the realistic models aren't as good as Reliberate or Photon. I'm sure it will get better over time though. And Erica Gloom says, easy, I have 4 GB VRAM and that's already enough against it. Again, these are very good arguments and I feel like the reason why the community trained SDXL models are not as good as the community trained SD 1.5 models is because the base of SDXL is just a lot more stiffer and stuffier and doesn't give this nice flowing and natural aesthetic that we expect. Now, of course, in the future, the community might find out how to train that better and give us much better and more consistent results that have this nice natural flow and authenticity in it. But of course, one problem remains, and that is the hardware requirements. SCXL just needs a good GPU and most people don't have access to that or simply can't afford that. So that is limiting the amount of people who can use that. And at least I think that it would be amazing to have SDXL models that can start with a smaller minimum resolution and still create interesting output like SD 1.5 can so that as many people as possible can have access to that technology while the people who have a better hardware still can use the higher resolutions. After we've looked at the opinions from the community, let's look at some hard facts on how it actually is used and accepted inside of the community. And one of the good indicators for that is to look at the download numbers. So here on Civit AI, which is one of the biggest pages for downloading these AI models, you can see for the 1.5 models that the most popular models like Realistic Vision have 672,000 downloads. Dream Shaper has 583,000 downloads and Magic Magic Mix Realistic has 541,000 downloads. Now, on the other hand, when we look at the SDXL model, we have here the base model from Stability AI, and this only has 90,000 downloads, while the Dream Shaper XL model has 84,000 downloads, and the Hello World model has 82,000 downloads. Of course, it is fair to say that SD 1.5 was not only around a longer time, but also there have been more iterations in between that trigger new downloads from the community. So it makes a lot more sense that these numbers are a lot higher. And 90,000 downloads of the SDXL model compared to the realistic vision model with 672,000 downloads is only seven times more. But at the same time, you might expect that for the time that SDXL has been around, especially from the community trained models, that there might be at least 120,000, 150,000 downloads for the community to even try it out. But of course, these kind of downloads are also limited by a lot of people who can't use these models at all because of the hardware requirements. Now here we have a comparison between an SD 1.5 image and an SDXL image. And I want you to guess which of them is which. Pause the video and then I'm going to reveal the answer. So on the left side, we have the 1.5 image. On the right side, we have the SDXL image. Would you say that these are dramatically different and have a huge improvement? Or would you say, well, it's just like a little bit better, maybe has a little bit more detail. And at that point, I want to throw in the argument, the question, what is the community actually using AI for images and videos for? And I would argue, most people use it for their artistic expression and experimentation. And for that, there is three factors that are much more interesting than how detailed the image is. And that is how authentic is it in the artistic styles it can create. This also includes how easy is it to train on different artistic styles that you want to put into the model. The second one is how good are the methods that I can use and apply to the model to create and control the content of the image like control net and image to image render. And of course, the third one is 
can I use the model at all with my hardware? And does the experimentation where I have to render series of image, which often means to render 10, 20, 30 images in one go just to test a single parameter and then move on to the next parameter of the settings. Do I really want to invest all of that extra time for a model that looks kind of stuffy and has a little bit more detail in it? Because at this point, personally, I have to say that 95% of the time I'm still with SD 1.5, not just because there's a lot more LoRa's and a lot more tools that you can use it with, but also because the output of the SDXL model often just doesn't give me the quality and results that I want. And they kind of look different from what I expect from a nice AI image. And of course, on top of that, SD 1.5 can be used with a lot of interesting tricks like this one I showed you last week, where you can get amazing images that look even even better than what you can do with SDXL just by using image to image render while upscaling at the same time. And it's just super crazy. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of that. I think it's a controversial but very interesting and important topic. And maybe the feedback also gives Stability AI a good insight into how the community thinks about how they train the models for the future and what we expect from this open source model to the actual use case of how we interact with these models. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.